Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. And uh, pack one, pick one. Underrealm Lich isn't bad. So what else do we have? Um, pretty much Lich, Deadly Visits, and some home stalwart here. And Lich is difficult to pass up on, although it does commit us to two colors. But uh, I think it's good enough to warrant a pick here. And anything we can hope to wheel. There's a lot of good Golgari cards. Guildgate, Dissident, Deadly Visits not gonna wheel, but maybe Veiled Shade or Vapors. Let's take a Lich here and see if we can draft Golgari back to back. All right, well, definitely get rewarded here. Pretty stacked Golgari pack. Uh, Spider, I'm not really considering too much. Mainly the Fine Broker and the Indric. And they're both excellent. So which one do we prefer? Fine Broker has good synergy with Underwhelm Lich as well. Let's take a Fine Broker. Pretty committed to Golgari. And uh, yeah, hopefully this works out. All right, what about a Rhizom Lurcher? Pretty nice follow-up. Stick to Golgari. Centipede would also be nice. Now that we have these nice undergrowth creatures, we want to look for some cheap dewdrops that can trade off some creatures we can sacrifice. Burglar Rats, Jenner Strays, Sever Strands, the Golgari life, basically. All right. And yeah, Pilfering Imp is one of those creatures, although I don't know if we can take it over a Necrotic Wound, which is uh, perfect in this deck. All right, let's take a Necrotic Wound. Hopefully one of these green and black cards wheels. So this is kind of the perfect start to a Golgari deck. Rhizome Lurcher, number two. Take it over a Gateway Plaza. Painter doesn't often make the cuts. And now we'll take the Guild Gate. Shade is a playable card sometimes, but it's nothing exciting. Much prefer Gender Strays at three and Centipedes. And with all these double blank, double green cards, we want a bit of mana fixing. Lockets you'll sometimes play, but you really want to maximize the number of creatures in the Golgari deck for undergrowth. So the non-creature spells really have to pull their weight and a locket is nothing special. All right, um, I'm a big fan of Beetle in this deck. Just an early body can be a 2-2 to trade off. And if we combine it with Sever Strands, we can put the counter somewhere else and sacrifice it. So I think we do take it over Guild Gate number two. Bats would also be playable, but got a decent number of fours already. And there we go, Sever Strands, one of the key cards in the Golgari deck. Plays well with Beetle, Generous Stray, Burglar Rats. Prey Upon is an okay card, but Sever Strands is just better. And all right, we wheeled some nice cards out of the first pack. I think I'm liking Dissident more than Lothoth Giants since we already have some good late game cards. Would rather just shore up the early game. And all right, not our guild gates. Trooper is pretty bad. Recluse is kind of mediocre. Shade is fine, but nothing special. We'll take our good mana fixing while we can. And all right, pretty decent follow up pack. Centipede, Necrolisk are both decent here. Uh, we don't have a ton of sacrifice fodder yet. We're, we're not having the rats and the strays yet. So I think I'm leaning Centipede over Necrolisk at the moment. And the Imp Wield, perfect. Great card here to fuel undergrowth. And we'll probably get a worm later anyway. And a painter, but I don't think we'll play that one. Take on a common for the vault. All right, well, that's about as good as a first bank can go. All right, opened an on-color rare, but it's not a very good one. Don't think there's many scenarios under which I would play secrets, even if we had some bomb rare like Underwhelm Lich. Yeah, this pack's pretty bad. Uh, there's a Child of Knights, Mediocre 2-drop, Veiled Shade. Could take a Vigor Spore Worm as a curve topper. Yeah, sometimes you can splash a, a third color, but I think... Given the power level of our deck with Fine Broker and Underwhelm Lich, if we can just stick to two colors, it's probably for the better. It's not like our deck is lacking power, and uh, stumbling on mana against the aggressive Boros decks is pretty punishing. So unless we have a great reason to splash, I'll stick to two colors. Yeah, probably just taking the Child of Night here. It's not an exciting pick, but it's a two-drop that we can play. Ooh, Deadly Visit is much better. Don't want to play a lot of non-creature spells, but Deadly Visit is perfect. Uh, Playcrafter, 
I think Golgari is the only deck where I would play Playcrafter, but we already have a Sever Strands, don't have a ton of Sacrifice Fodder outside of Beetle, and we can't take it over a Deadly Visit here. Alright, now what? Another Child of Night is pretty medium. Don't know if we want Crushing Canopy. We can be weak to Flyers for sure, so having a bit of a removal for Flyers is nice. What's our 2-drop situation at the moment? We've got Child of Night, Dissident, Beetle. Could maybe use another 2. But Child of Night at 1 toughness is pretty vulnerable. Don't think we want Okapi at 3. Yeah, we can probably end up with better 2s. Canopy has a more unique effect. Don't think we're splashing Centaur. <laughs> Second Fine Broker. Well, this draft is going well. Easy pickup. And... Hmm. There is definitely some diminishing returns with the uh, Rhizome Lurchers, but a third one is probably still acceptable. Like, it's either that or Shieldmate. I think I would take Shieldmate over Child here as a 2-drop. But let's take Lurcher number 3, and then we can worry about picking up 2-drops later. Alright, Gender Stray, perfect. Shieldmate I would also take happily here, but Gender Stray is much better. We have a bit of a hole at 3, plays well with... Sever Strands, Genshin Block, Fuel Undergrowth. Just a great card. And now we can take another Dissident as a good 2, or another Imp as a, a nice creature to sacrifice, and Fuel Undergrowth. This one's close. I think I'm leaning Dissident. Otherwise our early game is a little bit on the weak side. But uh, Imp would be nice too. And don't think we want the Barrier Bones. Can maybe use a Worm if we don't have any more expensive cards. We had uh, some pretty bad experiences with Gateway Plaza in a two-color deck. In the previous draft we have double Guild Gate, so we don't have to worry about picking Plaza now. I guess now we can take a Veil Shade. We have a bit of a hole at three, so this can fill that up. I'm not opposed to Undercity Uprising. I much prefer Sever Strands, but if we don't end up with another Sever Strands, maybe we'll play Uprising. Don't think we want any of these other cards. And I'll copy your Child of Knights. I guess Child of Knights. I'm hoping we can end up with another Centipede or Gender Stray at 3. And Locket or Uprising number 2. I mean, Barrier Bones, yes, it maybe feeds Undergrowth, but it does cost us a card. Pilfering Imp, on the other hand, takes away a card from the opponent, so it doesn't cost us a card. Uh, the Vine on one mana draws us a card when we sacrifice it. Barrier of Bones is card disadvantage, so I'm not the biggest fan of card disadvantage. I guess we'll take a Locket, can help fix our mana for Fine Broker, have a bit of a hole at 3, so it could do worse. And nothing here. Alright, so... The first pack definitely was better than the second one, but we still got some nice cards. Second Fine Broker, more Lurchers. So yeah, we're just looking for more Sever Strands, more Burglar Rats and Generous Strays. More removal in general would be nice, but our deck is shaping up nicely. Alright, what did we open? Molder Hulk I do not consider as a, a good finisher for the deck, and the Elemental is also pretty bad. The card I'm most looking at here is Whisper Agent. Double Black's not the easiest on the mana, but we do have double Guild Gate and Locket for fixing. And Surveil is nice, since it can put a creature in the graveyard. And uh, out of the Golgari deck, people don't play around it as much. So, let's take a Whisper Agent. Alright, so Lurcher number 4 is this. Yeah, there's definitely the risk of having a hand with all Lurchers and no early game stuff, but... We have a decent amount of early creatures we can trade off to fuel undergrowth. And I don't think there's anything else we want in this pack. Still not a fan of barrier bones. So let's take a lurcher. Not sure if we're going to play all four, but we can take it for now. All right, looks like this is the Demir pack with campaign and erasure. Could take a siege worm as a curve topper. Could take another Golgari locket. We're not going to splash blue. Probably just take the worm. And I think I'm taking the Vine here. A nice cheap creature we can play, Sacrifice. There's also Vapors as potential removal, but I, I think I'm just looking for more fuel for Undergrowth, considering we've got all these Lurchers. 
and uh, Vine is just a fine early play here. It's a Vine early play. <laughs> Alright, let's take another Deadly Visit. As much as I want another Vine. Yeah, Vapor fuels the graveyard a little bit too. And uh, Dead Weights. It's pretty tempting here. Poisoner has a bit more synergy in our deck. Dissident would also be nice. But that weight is that weight. And now we can look at maybe the Vapors. We are already have a Vigor Spore Worm. Don't think we want another one. Could take the Recluse since we are a bit soft to flying creatures. Gives us a Reach creature in our deck. So it's either a Recluse or Vapors. If we play Vapors, I'm not sure we want to play all the Children of Night. Any other one toughness creatures? Uh, the Bartism Bats. I think I'm actually leaning Recluse over Vapors. Alright, so Gorgon's a nice pickup, Centipede as well. It's between these two. Raiders is just a worse Rhizom Lurcher, and we already have four. We can kind of build our deck already here, since the draft is almost at a close. So I don't think we need both Children of Night. Probably want to play one of them, just have another two drop. Shade is cuttable. Crushing Canopy is maybe cuttable now that we picked up the Recluse. Don't think we need to lock it. Uh, maybe cut one Lurcher, maybe cut an Uprising. And then probably want to cut one of the Worms, not sh sure which one we prefer. And then two lands, we still need to make a handful of cuts, but we can figure those out later. So let's say we don't play the Shade. And maybe we cut one Lurcher. And then cut one of the Worms. Then our deck would look something like this. Two lands, 24, so we still need to make one cut. Maybe the Uprising. So let's say this is our deck. What would we prefer? What's an upgrade? Alright, let's take a Gorgon. Don't want any of these. Take an Uncommon for the Vault. And now I guess we'll take a Barrier Bones to make that one person happy. Alright, let's take another Painter. Got a Vapors anyway. Another Vine? I might actually play the Vine. If we play double Vine, then maybe we want to play all four Lurchers. So let's take a look. Maybe we don't need a Worm, and we can just play four Lurchers as our top end. Now that we have a nice set of Undergrowth Enablers. Maybe we don't need the Recluse, and we can play Uprising instead. Agent is cuttable. Could also be a 16 land deck. Since we have Vines and Generous Trade to Cantrip, and double Guildgate for fixing, and our curve stops at 5. I don't think we want Wand. Like, it does fuel our Graveyard, but... If there's any deck where we would want want, it's probably this one since we have four lurchers. But we already have Underwhelm Lich that does a good job of putting our entire deck in our graveyard. And want is card disadvantage. It can definitely lead to some interesting situations where if our library is empty, we can basically choose which card to put on top and draw for the turn. I don't think we need it. Uh, Deadly Visits makes it so we can put lands in the graveyard if we find them later. Lich also helps us avoid lands, so these are kind of reasons to maybe still play 17, so we make sure we get up to 5 mana in the first place. Vine and Gender Stray could be reasons to maybe get away with 16, or Curve is relatively low. Lurcher is a 4-drop, so despite being a powerful card, it only costs us 4 mana. We're not often going to cast it on turn 4, but it still only costs us 4 mana, so that's also a reason to play fewer lands. Um, I think it's close. Probably just going to play 17 since our deck is pretty powerful, so don't need to take too many risks. What's it going to be? Looks like Child of Night, the overwhelming favorite to be cut here. Alright, so this will be our deck. Our mana base, um, favoring black for double deadly visit is probably fine. Gold Garbage, act number two. Let's go. Alright, what about this hand? Seems totally fine. Not sure how many games we need to win in a row to reach Mythic here. Probably like three or four. Turn one Torch Courier, our opponent means business. 
Don't think we dead weight that. I'll be a little bit more patient since we've got a stray coming up next turn. If they play a great 2 drop, we might dead weight it instead. And nah, that doesn't count. Alright, let's play our stray. Happy if it dies, since that feels wound and lurcher. And next turn we could go Gorgon plus dead weight. Alright, Sky Knight's good target for dead weight. Play our Gorgon, and then, uh, yeah, hope they feel so inclined to attack us. Another flyer could be annoying. This is where drawing stuff like Sever Strands is nice. Pilfering Imp, Divine. Ways to put creatures in the graveyard that doesn't need the opponent's help. That's fine. Deadly Visits. Don't really want to deadly visit instructors since we kind of want to just trade with our creatures. So I think I'm going to be patient. And I don't think I want to play out a 4 mana 2 2. Keep deadly visit for a flyer or a bigger problem. And then we also have necrotic wound end of turn maybe to finish off a creature. Alright, they're going to mentor on to Torch Courier. So they probably have a combo trick so that the urchin. It gets pumped here. If it's a sure strike and they kill our creature in first rank damage, we could still necrotic wound to kill the blade instructor before regular damage, so that's something to keep in mind. Could put the Gorgon in front of the torch courier so we don't take as much trample damage since the fire urchin does trample over. And then just put Janistray in front of Blade Instructor. They'll probably sure strike the blade instructor. Hit us for two, and end of turn we can necrotic wound the blade instructor. That sounds okay. Because if we put Gorgon in front of Urchin and they sure strike the Urchin, I, get, I guess it would probably be more likely to sure strike the Blade Instructor anyway, but just don't want to end up taking a bunch of trample damage by blocking the Urchin. Alright, take heart, that's fine. Another trick. Sure strike there as well. Alright. But we get to play a big Lurcher and still have... Necrotic Wound for 2 up, so we should be okay. And now we have the instant, so if our opponent tries to get cheesy with another combat trick, we can punish them. At least if uh, they're not pumping the Urchin. So Lurcher goes on Blade Instructor. At 13, I feel still pretty, pretty safe here. Alright, that one needs to die. Since that can tap down our creatures. As well as maybe burn us out eventually. So I think we'll use our mana efficiently. Still have a deadly visit for a flyer. Alright, Sever Strands could be good if they have a Luminous Bonds. Let's play another Lurcher for now. I think attacking is a little bit too aggressive. Once we play the third Lurcher, we can maybe send with one of them. That's fine. No attacks. Alright, I think I'm sending a Lurcher here. Play another one. Hopefully this one makes some trades so we can uh, play a bigger Lurcher, but a uh, 4 4 4 4 is still a fine card here. Keep Sever Strands until we find one of our Sacrifice Fodder creatures or they use Illuminous Bonds. Do have to be mindful of Cosmotronic Wave at any point. So if we fear we're gonna get waved, we could always Sever Strands to gain a bit of life back. Guard attacks for four. Don't think we want to take four. So I'll block. Our deck should be okay playing a longer game here. Got another Lurcher in our deck somewhere. 
So it could be an okay time to deadly visit, considering we've got sever strands as well. Deadly visit can help us find a creature to set up sever strands. So we don't take too much damage in case of a potential wave. And then do we kill the boar or the blade instructor? Probably the boar. Those can go. So essentially five mana, kill a creature, draw two cards here. And we'll stay back since we're cowards. Once we find another blocker, we can maybe get in there with Lurcher. Legionnaire, it's bad news. And a witness. Alright, Beetle's a nice draw. So we can make a 5-5 Lurcher. Do we feel comfortable attacking with a 5-5 Lurcher? I think we are. We are down to one blocker here, but also want to get the game over with since we're out of action, so we're both top decking and I'm not sure who wins that battle. No attacks is perfect. Keep on attacking. It's actually interesting whether we should attack with a 4-4 or a 5-5. If we attack with a 4-4, they could triple block Urchin, Witness and Courier and we would only kill Courier and Witness, which isn't the best trade. If we attack with a 5-5, we get to take out Urchin and Courier, which is better. So I think we keep attacking with a 5-5. And they'll probably chum block with the Witness at some point. Oh yeah, Underwhelm Lich here would be amazing. Vine's not bad. Alright, probably expect a chum block with the Witness now. The fact that they're not eager to block does point towards a potential Cosmotronic Wave. Centipede is nice. Let's sack the vine first. Alright, still fine to attack here. Attacking with both lurchers is maybe a little bit too aggressive. Alright, opponent's down to four. Healer's Hawk. Dissidents. Alright, let's put a pedal to the metal here. How much Hearthstone did I play, if at all? I played it a little bit when it was brand new, I think when it was still in like beta or whatever. And I did enjoy my time playing it, but uh, it doesn't have the longevity of magic. And there we go, sweet, so managed to beat Boros with some nice 4-4 Rhizome Lurchers. Alright, we're just one win away from Mythic. Thought we were further away. Let's open this vault. There's people that like to have their vault so they can see their progress. I'm not one of those people. If there's a notification in my face, I want to get rid of it. I've been conditioned by social media. Alright, we're back and we've got a keepable hand. Probably playing the vine on one, so we can sack it on two. Turn one swamp into a hired poisoner. Alright, I guess uh, we'll just play as a swamp here. Pass a turn. Can shun block with the vine on the poisoner, and then draw a card. Opponent on Demir. Ooh, spy bug. I like how the Divine keeps asking, is it me you want to sacrifice, sir? Yes, it is. Alright, Fine Broker's good. No plays this turn, but some nice plays next turn.
Notion Rain. Alright, they've got a 2 2 spy bug. Pretty sure we're gonna end up using Deadly Visit on the spy bug here. Don't have any easy way of blocking it otherwise. Could find Broker back. The fine. Ooh, Deadweight. Deadweight's great. Alright, we'll, we'll take a turn off. Kill the spy bug while we can. And then, ooh, Fine Broker plus Deadweight is also a pretty sweet combo. Get our Deadweight back. Forgot to mention that during the draft. Barters and Bats. Can we draw Swamp? Swamp would be nice. Alright, we'll play our own Bats then. Try and trade. We can Fine Broker the Deadweight later. If they kill the Bats, then we could be a little bit behind. Alright, they hesitated, so I don't think they have uh, Dazzling Lights. And trading creatures against a Golgari deck is never really a great plan. But it looks like they were maybe trying to clear a path for this Darkblade agent. So 4-4 four, four Lurcher seems okay, I'm fine if it trades for the Darkblade agent. Could also find Broker back that way, and then if the Find Broker trades for agent, that's fine. That's probably better here. Could also get back the bats instead of the dead weight, but then we shrink the lurchers. Kinda wanna empty our hand. So I'll get back the removal spell. And if they wanna kill the fine broker, that's fine by me. So game is going pretty well, got a pretty stacked hand still. And despite only having four mana in play, we can deploy our powerful lurchers. Enhance surveillance, fair enough. And a wish coin crab. Opponent's gonna pump the brakes here. Think we're fine trading. Grows the lurcher even more. And now it's big enough to attack past the crab. Could go double dissident plus dead weight, but there's nothing great to dead weight. Yeah, that weight on the dark blade isn't bad, so it doesn't uh, get to connect. But that weight on Pitless Gorgon is probably even better. Probably that weighting the Gorgon. See what responses resolves. Yeah, I mean the surveillance also holds priority, so they don't necessarily have something here. And I think I would be happy still just trading Lurcher for Agent if they have a Whisper Agent. And if they don't, then we get in 5 damage, so that's good. Could be a triple block. That's fine. We'll kill the two creatures instead of the crab. Um, Let's say they do have a Dazzling Lights, Shrink, Lurcher down to 2 power. We don't want to put uh, Agent first because if they do have the Dazzling Lights we wouldn't kill the Agent. If we put Child first we still kill the Child if they have Dazzling Lights. I guess we could go Double Dissident instead of Lurcher in case they do have a counter spell here. Mm, not sure. They don't really attack past the Crab. No, opponent sacking surveillance. And we'll keep land in hand, do we? Now we should play the land, so if we do draw another land we can play 2 and 5 in the same turn. And I'm okay discarding a dissident. Alright, let's get in for 6. Could go Centipede Dissident or Double Dissident. Double Dissident might be better. Of course we could just Deadly Visit the Crab next turn and attack for more. But I don't think I want to Deadly Visit the Crab if we don't have to. So we can just attack with everyone and pump the Dissident that they do block. Or we could just Deadly Visit, smash for 10. I think I'll play it cautiously here. Uh, 
And do we keep land in hand now? Probably not, since then if we draw land we can go centipede plus visit. And if we discard centipede it's not the worst. Notion rain down to four. All right, they'll need some good ones. Hired Poisoner, better target for deadly visits. Pilfering Imp, so we could take it extra slow, play the Imp first, sack it, see what's up. But uh, deadly visiting the Poisoner, forcing them to chum block seems fine. And if they have a counter spell, we'll know about it. Alright, Beetle and Strands are both good. Can put a Dissident up to a 5-5 after being pumped. Probably want the Strands first. Alright, let's send the squad. They could have an instant speed removal spell or a bounce spell. And then eat a Dissident, that's okay. Alright, Whisper Agent. So they still have to chump the Lurcher. Their opponent falls to two. We traded some creatures. Play Imp. A Ritual of Soot doesn't kill Lurcher. A land's not gonna cut it. GG's. Alright, looks like we're gonna make it. Bam! Mythic. Nice. It's good to be back. And it's only the second game, so we still get to have a lot of fun with our gold garbage here. Alright, nice. Not bad. Rank 80. It's pretty decent. Alright, now we get to be the, the scary mythic player. Hand looks fine. Facing the Boros Legion. Ooh, turn two challenger, that's scary. So I was gonna play the Recluse, but now we might have to play Gorgon and hope it trades, because the Recluse isn't gonna prevent them mentoring. This is kind of the reason why I don't like cards like Wall of Mists too much, since while they are fine blockers, they don't prevent mentor. Alright, no dark current, please. Alright, double white, so it's gonna be a Luminous Bonds or a Demotion or just a Strike. And next turn we can play the Bats. Alright, Killed Mage can tap down the Gorgon next turn. But the Bat still threatens to trade for the Challenger, which is fine by me. We'll have to kill the Guild Mage eventually. Since it does have uh, some activated abilities. But for now, it's mainly just a Tapper. So they can pump the Challenger, Mentor onto Guild Mage, but then we can put Bats in front of Guild Mage and Gorgon in front of Challenger, so... Those are two trades I'm happy to make. Can't forget about the Torch Courier giving something haste, could make a surprise hasty Mentor creature. Although Patrol doesn't really change the equation. Alright, Pilfering Imp. So we can go Recluse, Vine and Imp, unload our hand. Let's tap our mana like a, a civilized person. And these two creatures help us fuel the Lurcher as well. Alright, if our opponent has Cosmotronic Wave, we'll be sad. But, uh, we'll see here. Challenger gets pumped. They probably want to pump Patrol, but then we can double block Patrol with Bats and Recluse. Block, 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 block. We don't get to kill the Guild Mage, but that's fine. We get to kill the Patrol, which is pretty scary. For a single red, they could have the Split card as a pump spell. 
Yeah, hopefully they don't have the, the, the split pump spell here. Ooh, looks like they do have it. All right, that's rough. So the patrol gets to survive and they kill both our creatures. But there wasn't an easy way around this. I think we sack him first. Play a bigger lurcher and then hope to draw into a deadly visit at some point. Daphning Clarion, wow. Alright. Our opponent can start activating Guild Mage. Patrol could mentor onto Courier, so. Yeah, the, the natural play for them is probably. Well, I guess never mind. I was gonna say they're gonna use Guild Mage, tap down Lurcher, and then mentor onto Torch Courier. And hit us for six. But uh, Pack Beast taps down both creatures at once. So we basically need Deadly Visit into Deadly Visit. Does Fine Broker do anything? Not really. So if we sag Vine, what are we hoping to draw? Probably want it back as a blocker. So we'll play Fine Broker. Yeah, Recluse can block Patrol, although it doesn't solve the Guild Mage problem, but it's probably worth it to get the Recluse still. We have a giant ground creature, so Gorgon doesn't really help us too much. Don't think we can attack here, otherwise Guildmage stepping down a blocker is a disaster. But uh, yeah, now Guildmage can just start burning us out. We're basically dead next turn. Patrol attacks down to 5, burn us down to, f to 2, and then Guildmage again, so... Bringing back Recluse actually didn't really accomplish much, unless we find an answer here. Yeah, that Integrity Intervention basically won them the game. Need a severed strands off the top or something similar. Well, there's a severed strands and a deadly visit. Hmm. Now what? We can sever strands sacking the fine broker, which gains us four life. We go up to nine. They burn us down to six. Um, and then we have a blocker for a patrol, blocker for pack beast, so I think we should be able to survive here. And then next turn we can deadly visit the patrol, so that we don't have to worry about it. Alright, this is close. They could tap down a creature as well instead of burning us, but it adds to the same amount of damage basically. It makes more sense for them to maybe tap our creature. We shouldn't have played the Recluse before Severus Transing, that was a mistake, because now they have more info. So yeah, they could tap down Lurcher, and then the Courier and the Pack Beast can attack. And we still take six, and they Mentron to Courier. We're not dead, but uh, it's gonna be scary here, especially if they can give something haste with Courier, or if they have another relevant card. We are dead to removal spell on the Recluse. Hasty Hammer Dropper, does that kill us? Let's a Mentor onto Patrol once again. And we have to Chum Block the Hammer Dropper here, otherwise we're taking 9. Yeah, that's bad. So we need another cheap card here, a 1-drop. Centipede's not a 1-drop. Yeah, we're dead. Alright, well, we almost managed to stabilize, but despite uh, the perfect draws here, we weren't able to. Iron Shell Beetle, so close yet so far away. Well, let's make him do it. We should have kept a black mana for sure. At least represents a uh, one mana removal spell here. If we only keep up green mana, then there's nothing they need to play around. Alright, let's see if we can get some wins back. 
and seems fine. Up against Demir. Let's uh, play a 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Ooh, Thief of Sanity. Our opponent's gonna be sad. Alright, Leapfrog. It's uh, not a card you see very often in Dimir. We actively want to sack the Vine. We could chum block the Leapfrog and then sack it to prevent damage, but then if we were to draw a land, we miss out on our land drop. So I'll sack Vine. And... Uh, Alright, Swamp is good. I think we'll keep Dissident back. Don't really want to trade 3 damage for 2 damage. If they want to cast a non-creature spell, so that's fine by me. Spybug. Good target for Deadly Visit at some point. Uh, probably want a Generous Tray. Play the Forest first, then we could have access to our Pilfering Imp for one black mana. Probably worth it to play the Stray first in case we draw a Guild Gate here. Since the difference between 4 and 5 mana could be pretty huge. Alright. Didn't end up mattering. I guess now we can attack. Should have probably considered attacking first here, but our opponent takes it anyway. So next turn we can go Dissident plus Centipede, taking 5 here. So it's not looking like our creatures are going to trade off too much. Probably going to save the Deadly Visit until Spybug gets one bigger, at least. Get on the board, opponent is stuck on lands. So maybe we get to punish them. Although another deadly visit maybe changes that. Nah, I think I'm still playing two creatures here. And then we can uh, use our two deadly visits to clean up uh, their remaining creatures while beating down. We're not really playing to the strengths of Rhizome Lurcher by playing two creatures here, but don't think I'm too worried. Thought Erasure, all right. Takes one deadly visit. The other deadly visit kills Spybug and take it from there. They might have to keep creatures back as well. Don't think that Leapfrog can attack. Stays back, so we'll deadly visit Spybug, attack with everyone. Seems fine. And we can put creatures in the graveyard if we want to. Lands we don't need. Can also find Broker back at that weight, but I'm expecting a trade here. And what can we expect our opponent to play if they play a Wishcoin Crab? Pumping Dissident is nice, since then it can attack past it. Yeah, I think I'll pump a Dissident still. Douser of Lights, the same reasoning there. Dissident can attack past it as a 5-5. And if they kill Dissident, then Lurcher gets bigger, so that's fine too. Alright, that's fine. So no need to find Broker quite yet. Can just play Lurcher. Could also pump the Dissident, to be honest, but probably better to play another creature here. Yeah, that's also a good argument if we need to sacrifice a stray to something like a Sever Strands. We don't really want to put a counter on it. So our opponent's down to 5. Burglar Rats. Alright, I'll, I'll keep the value, find Broker. Plus we want to maybe play a Deadweight here. To get rid of a blocker to kill them. Is this uh, Sever Strands? Alright. They go to 1 life here, if we pump the Dissident. So had we put the counter on the other creature, then maybe we would have had the uh, lethal here, but... Uh, Think we'll be fine. Can just find Broker back a Rhizome Lurcher instead. If we pump Dissident, we put them to one, and then we have two lethal threats. That could be better. Think I'll sag Vine, see what we draw, and then probably just play Fine Broker here.
get a lurcher back. All right, opponent has seen enough. All right, three one. Yeah, I also agree that Golgari is underrated. I do think you need to open a good rare to have a great incentive to move into Golgari, but just a combination of like burglar rats and generous trace with sever strands means you get to turn a sever strands, which not many people appreciate, into an actual pretty good removal spell. All right, turn on healer shock. Is met by a turn one pilfering imp. Necrotic wounds not bad. So we are keeping pace with a Boros deck here. Blade instructor. All right. So we could sack the imp and then necrotic wound the blade instructor. Although the dissident still just trades. So I guess we'll just play a, s a centipede here, answer their 1-2-3 curve with our 1-2-3 curve. We could get punished if they have a Cosmotronic Wave by not sanking the Imp, so that's one concern I have. And they are getting pretty empty-handed, so taking a peek at their hand is pretty tempting. Let's take a peek. I'm curious. Alright, just a shield mate. And let's just wound the Instructor right now. Don't want to run into any top deck pump spells. And Dissident can trade for Goblin. We stripped her hand from all relevant action. Recruits, fine. Hmm, I was gonna play Lurcher. I guess I still am playing Lurcher since our other creatures line up poorly against Recruit. But it does make it so we can't double spell next turn. Alright, more instructors. We'll need to find an answer to this hawk eventually. Alright, I guess we double spell here. Could even consider attacking with the lurcher, but then we don't have a free block on the instructor. We want to dissuade them from attacking. So they're making Hawk into a 2-2. Two -two. Did they draw a trick? Not necessarily. I think we just block with Lurcher. It would have to be a Sure Strike. And if we double block, Sure Strike is still bad for us. We would have to triple block. Yeah, let's just block with Lurcher. If it's plus 2 plus 2, we still trade. Alright, with a Sure Strike. So if we wanted to play around Sure Strike, we would have to triple block. But that's bad in a lot of other circumstances. Opponent gets a 3-3 Hawk next turn, which could definitely run away with the game, but we've got a, a lot of answers. Hopefully we draw one. A fine Broker can return... Not Necrotic Wound, sadly, but can return a big Lurcher. So, are we attacking? I don't think so. All right, they're pumping Recruit. That's good news, I think. So let's uh, think for a second. The Recruit first strike kills, presumably, the Dissident. Doesn't really matter. And then uh, Centipede finishes off Recruit. Straight trades for Instructor. Uh, if we were to put a Generous Stray on another creature in front, then they can first strike the other creature, and then Stray isn't enough to kill Recruit. So we have to block like this if we want to trade. And I think we're fine trading. Ooh, do they have another trick? No. Nope. Alright. Deadly visit, perfect, so now we're stable. Um, can probably afford to take another hit from the Hawk, just to get a good blocker for Halberd Deer, otherwise we're giving up a little bit of value from the Centipede. So, fine broker. Return Rhizome Lurcher, I think. And then no attacks. We'll play around removal spell. And now a deadly visits. 
into double lurcher is gonna win us a game could even make a case for playing lurcher first get the beatdown started earlier but against the boros deck i'm gonna preserve my life total and another fine broker why not if they draw another flyer they could potentially outrace us since they are up to 28 and yeah there's a scanner legionnaire yeah we could still easily lose this game but now I'm attacking. I don't think I can play around the removal spell anymore. Got to send. If we had a dead weight in our graveyard, then that would be nice. Could be that we should have put Fine Broker in the graveyard, just because if they drew Flyer, we didn't have a great answer lined up. We could, of course, Fine Broker back the Pilfering Imp and have a blocker for one turn. It's not an ideal solution. And hope they don't answer the Lurcher here. All right, let's attack with everyone once again. They are taking 12, so we could present lethal next turn. Yeah, we've got the reach creature as well, so we have a few answers to Legionnaire, but... I think we play another Lurcher here instead of Fine Broker. Legionnaire can put us to six. They don't have six mana for the, the burn spell. If they have Cosmotronic Wave, then playing the Imp doesn't help. So, let's just add another 6-6 to the board. Alright, untapped guild gates. Yeah, they might have to chum block now. So the Lurchers were able to outrace Legionnaire. Swamp draw, so... Can't play any green spells out of the graveyard. We'll have... Uh, Enough mana to replay the Pilfering Imp, that's about it. But yeah, we'll send. Perfect. Take 9. Down to 1. Can't think of many ways they can steal this game at 8 life. I guess a Citywide Bust is one of the ways they can recover. So we probably shouldn't play the Fine Broker. I guess I could like Lightning Helix end of turn into untap land and then inescapable blaze kill us. But Citywide Bust is a more straightforward answer to this board. Let's uh, pump the Fine Broker, I guess. I don't know, we might be overthinking it. I guess we could play a Fine Broker and then get back a Centipede. That way it doesn't die to the Citywide Bust and we still have a lethal threat. I guess that's reasonable because I don't want to lose to like Bird Spell into Haste Creatures. All right, hopefully we got there. Six mana, GG's. Inescapable Blaze, wow, they had it too. So yeah, that's about as close as it gets. One more attack from Legionnaire and we would have died. Four and one with Gold Garbage, Act Two. Fine Hand. Turn to Steamkin. I kind of had a double take here. Are we playing standard? Gorgon doesn't have too much value against Boros. So we'll run it out. We might pick up a counter from the Centipede later. Got a fine broker anyway. I guess there's an argument that if they cast a Luminous Bonds, sacking Centipede is a bit more value than sacking Gorgon with the Sever Strands. So I could have considered that as well. Alright, so for now, what's our plan? Probably just play a centipede. Not gonna attack, seems a bit too aggressive. And playing Bartos and Bats in the face of a bunch of 1-1s seems bad if they can kill the Gorgon. Shieldmate's fine. So a slightly mana inefficient turn here, but it's okay. We'll play the bats now. Did 
the steamkin still pretty small, but uh, it's probably not going to stay that way for very long. Could see a wave here. Healer shock instead. Necrotic wounds. All right, so if we can trade off one creature, we get to kill hawk. Could also be okay to just trade off the partisan bats. Like trading three damage for one lifelink damage is not so bad. Yeah, let's attack. Opponent takes it. Play a dissident. All right, so we're not entirely sure how we need to sequence our removal. Well, now we know. This hawk's gonna die. Although we could keep back the Bartosm bats, force them to use removal on the bats first, and then cast the Sever Strands. So if their removal happens to be Luminous Bonds, we get some value. I guess I'm down. We're not really in a hurry. At 16 still, can take another hit for 4. And if they do have a wave, they get in a bit of damage, but then we've got the Necrotic Wound as well. Alright, so Legionnaire we can block with Recluse. So they have a trick, that's fine. Let's see what it is. Can use Necrotic Wound to finish off Legionnaire in a turn. Take heart. We don't even have to do this, considering we have Recluse on defense, so the Legionnaire doesn't really break through. So I think I'll untap and then just uh, probably sack the Centipede. We can put the counter on the Recluse itself. Could attack first. They're not too likely to want to trade off. Maybe we sneak in three damage. And then um, I think I'm going to keep up Necrotic Wound in case of any pump spells on the Legionnaire. And there's nothing too exciting to find Broker back. Another Healer Sock. Shieldmates. Alright. Pilfering Imp could be useful. Alright, I guess we'll find Broker back. What do we find Broker back? Bartos and Bats trades with Hawk. Centipede's not too interesting. I guess we'll go with the... the bats here in case something happens to our recluse. Alright, so now we're just waiting for a big Rhizom Lurcher. Underrealm Lich would be a nice draw. Could sack the Imp, don't think I'm too interested right now. Could also Necrotic Wounds, the Legionnaire, although now it only gives minus one, minus one. So by returning a creature we also made our wound a little bit worse. But the Vine's about to hit the graveyard soon enough. So let's sacrifice it, see what we draw. Generous Stray can play that. Alright, I think I want to keep up a wound here. And the Bartos and Bats trades for patrol, so I don't feel the need to do anything. And I don't think we have any great attacks, sadly. So got a bit of a board stall. Could get scary if a wave happens. Street riots, wow. That's unexpected, but it's going to be pretty good here. Alright, we'll let that resolve. I think we let them attack. It's probably the best street riot I've seen so far, but it's still probably not good enough. Ooh, there we go, Underrealm Lich. Now we've got something to work with. So we'll get to our big lurchers soon enough. Well, <laughs> I guess I'll take the, the green one.
pretty sure our opponent has a land in hand, so I'm not going to bother sacking the imp. Probably want to kill the well before it kills our Bartos and bats. <laughs> More lands. Well, at least we didn't draw six lands in a row. So we want one of our creatures to die here somehow. Maybe attack with one dissident and they'll trade. We'll see. Can we get both shield mates? Wow, this is great. No. Oh. Make the trade. Yes, trade. Well, this is just weird. All right. I mean... Guess I'm sacking the imp. Not too surprising. And then do we Necrotic Wind the Welp right now? I think we do in case a pump spell draws. Well, if they find an answer for our uh, Flyer and a Reach creature, we could be in a bit of trouble. Bounty Agent doesn't do anything. Don't have many cards remaining and we still have to draw all our Rhizome Lurchers. There we go, Deadly Visits. Can kill Perhelium Patrol. Which is probably the scariest creature here. Could probably attack first with the Dissidents. Do we send both? Can pump both, so probably just a one. Yeah, it's too bad we had to put a Deadly Visit in the graveyard here, but so be it. Could attack with a Lich, but I don't think I would want to pay for life to keep it alive. Although maybe we should attack. It's a close call. Alright, let's trade. It's also just a good blocker. But uh, yeah, maybe we should attack with a Lich. Opponent being happy to trade makes me think they don't have Cosmotronic Wave in their deck. We'll start being more aggressive next turn, since we'll probably find a Rhizome Lurcher. Well, now we get rewarded for keeping the Deadly Visit. We, we don't risk decking with Lich, so that's not a concern. We can trade Bats, considering they still have a Hawk to, tr to block the Bat anyway. So this seems fine. I guess we could double block to prevent the trample damage. Just take six. I mean, I don't think I want to lose both these creatures, since we have a deadly visit anyway. Taking six is a lot, but we're at 18, so that should be fine. Alright, we'll, we'll block like this. Take six. Yeah, the Lich replaces our draw step, so we're never actually taking a draw step from an empty library. Gotta keep both. So we can start being a bit more aggressive here. A Lich can attack, I think. It's a pretty swole Rhizome Lurcher. I think we take Lurcher still. Send in the squad. Can pump Dissident and still play Lurcher. Probably don't want to let the trade happen, otherwise we might actually risk decking. Oops. Forgot to pump the Dissident here, we had the mana to do both. Oh well, we missed out on two damage. Hopefully it doesn't matter. True Far Captain, ooh. That's kind of a problem. How do we get past the captain at 8 life? Do we just deck our opponent now? Or we can just find broker back. Dead weight, although that doesn't do it. Can get back a flyer. Let's see, the, the dissident can still attack. Find broker can attack. We just can't attack with the, the big creatures here, basically. Yeah, we'll take a find broker. Could also return vine, which is a blocker. That doesn't deal damage to the True Fire Captain. We can't attack with a Lich since we have to pay the 4 life, otherwise we risk decking. 
And then we would also take another four. But the Dissident can attack. And the Gorgon can attack. I mean, we could let the trade happen and then hope to close out the game in two turns. Don't think that's a great idea. Yeah, it's pretty funny that our Lurchers were just too big here. Doesn't happen a whole lot. Opponent takes it, so we'll pump. I forgot uh, the Steam can trade it away. So, 3-4s are good to attack now, too. Alright, do we get back anything? Probably just the dead weights. Getting more big creatures doesn't help. Could also go for the Bartism Bats, but the Hawk just trades for it. Or we could go for Vine if we need another blocker with no power. Probably dead weight. Yeah, we did miss out on 2 damage earlier. Maybe now we missed out on 3 damage. It does start to add up, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, we could consider attacking with everyone now, since indeed the captain triggers after regular damage. So if we can deal lethal damage, then we could attack. We don't want to run into a situation where we don't have lethal damage and they get to block. So let's uh, think for a second. If we dead weight, get rid of a blocker, they have two blockers, so presumably block block, and they're still taking 4, 5, plus 6 is 11 plus 6 is 17, and we can pump. So they should be pretty dead, even if they have one removal spell. So I think we go for it. So some pretty interesting rules interactions in this game, both with a Lich and a Captain. But I think we're good to go. We can pump Dissidents. Can double check if we even have two points. That's essentially 14. So we don't have to pump dissident. They could have cast Sure Strike on the creature that's blocked by Trufar Captain, and then indeed we would have died. Good call. And Sure Strike. Target creature gets plus 3 plus 7 first strike, so yeah, can target anything. Yeah, we would have uh, died to a Sure Strike. Don't think it's correct to play around it there. Don't want to give them more outs, but uh, good, uh, good point. All right, fine hands, good curve of creatures. Not really in the market for trading here, considering we've got a generous tray and a recluse coming up, so I'll take two. So next turn we can go Recluse plus Imp, or Imp plus Centipede, or just play Bartizan Bats. No attacks. So let's lead with a Pilfering Imp. Might bait out a Counterspell. And then we'll play the Recluse here. Next turn we can threaten an attack with the Dissident. Ooh, Chemistress, that's a good one. Alright, so they've got some nice card draw here. And a Poisoner, alright. Let's uh, sack the Imp and see what's up. Deadly Visit can go. And we'll play Centipede. Alright, so got a bit of a board stall. So we want to try and trade off creatures. Find some big lurchers, get rid of the Death Toucher if we can. Underrealm Lich would be great here. Although it does die to Artful Takedown, one of the few ways to get rid of a Underrealm Lich. So we don't want to run into a situation where we mill our entire deck into our graveyard and then they kill the Lich and we deck ourselves. Alright, so let's take to the skies. Phantasm, sure, and more Darkblade Agents. 
All right. They're probably waiting for a land to discard to the Chemister's Insight. So I think we're slightly behind because of the Chemisters, but not by much. Sever strands the bats, that's fine. Alright, so now we're back to even Stevens, although they still have the Chemisters. So the Dissident can't attack into the Dowser, could attack with the Gorgon, but then they trade for Child of Night, which is a bad trade. So yeah, can't do much. So, got a recluse to block an opposing flyer, potentially. Flooding out a little bit, but I think we still play out our lands. We could suicide the centipede to get a counter on the dissident, so it can attack past the dowser. Seems like a lot of effort, just to trade for a higher poisoner. Alright, necrotic wound is interesting. So now Dissident could attack past the Dowser, although if they have a counterspell we get punished pretty badly. So I don't think I'm into doing anything here. Just pass a turn. Opponent kept the card in hand and they didn't jumpstart inside, so we know they have a good card in hand that they didn't play. So it's either a removal spell or a counterspell. Yeah, Demir is definitely a good archetype in drafts. Let's say they make us discard, I was gonna say. What do we kill? Probably just a higher poisoner. And looks like they're countering this. And looks like it's a devious cover-up since they're looking at their graveyard. So what do they get back? Deadly visit and Sever Strands, those are pretty good. Probably informant as well, considering the Dark Blade agents. Yep. Alright. Well, at least we got rid of Devious Cover-Up, so maybe now we can resolve Underwhelm Lich if we draw it. Our own Deadly Visits. So we can kill the Dowser, so the Dissidents can attack, one can trade for Poisoner. I think that's fine, we do want to start making a move. Keeping this in hand is bad if they have more discard. A vine. We just put it in the graveyard, since that's basically what the vine would do, cycle itself, draw the next card and end up in the graveyard for lurchers. So might as well uh, take the middleman out of the equation. So now we can attack with the dissidents, can only pump one of them, so probably don't want to attack with both. Alright, that weight one of the dissidents, other one trades for poisoner, or for deadly visits. Alright, so opponent used some good removal. This could have been a deadly visit that they shuffled back, or they could still have one left. You might see some attacks from the Dark Blade agents, which will result in some trades. And then if we draw Lurchers, they're pretty big. Seems okay. And then we put the counter on the Stray or the Recluse. I'm leaning Recluse. Alright, land doesn't do much. I think we'll hold it for now. Make them overvalue discard effects, maybe. A tenth land doesn't do anything for us, I don't think. Informants. Well, glad we got rid of those Darkblade agents, since they would have been drawing more cards here. Does mean the Phantasm grows, but we can still block with Recluse at the moment. Sever Strands isn't bad. Alright, so how many creatures are in the graveyard? Seven. We still haven't drawn a single Rhizome Lurcher, and we've got, I believe, four in the deck. It might be better to Sever Strand the Poisoner, so if we draw Lurcher, it trumps the board, than it is to kill the Phantasm. And I'll do it now in case of Counterspells. We could get punished if our opponent surveils next turn and we never draw Lurcher. We're gonna get beat down by the Phantasm, but... So be it. Alright, this is gonna hurt. It's a big phantasm. Our lurchers are still gonna be significantly larger, but... Uh, yeah, this could be painful. 
We also have two Golgari Fine Brokers. Did we play both? Still have both in the deck. So we could still return a Death Touch creature at any point. So we've got some good draws. Four Rhizom Lurchers. Two Golgari Fine Brokers or Underwhelm Lich. And what do we return? Probably the Gorgon over the Stray. Could also go for a Flyer, but I don't think we're outracing the Phantasm, although we could double block Phantasm, to be honest. It's kind of a close call. I think we go for Gorgon. Play it safe. Alright, time to draw some Lurchers. So Gorgon can go in front of Phantasm, Fine Broker. We can trade for Agents. Keep the Reach creature in case of flying. If we draw Fine Broker, we can return Fine Broker with Fine Broker. It's pretty nice. Alright, there we go. At long last. The first of hopefully many. Oh, another Poisoner. <laughs> no, our only weakness. Death Touch. Ooh, that's a good one. Alright, so how many removal spells do we have left? Do we still have a Deadweight? We do. So I don't think we attack into it since we can Deadweight the Poisoner at some point. Alright, no Artful Takedowns, please. Deadly Visit, that's fine. So they're killing our Reach creature, which implies they've got some uh, flyers left in their 8 cards, now 7. They might uh, attack pretty soon. Alright, that's easy. So do we kill the Phantasm or the Poisoner? If we kill the Poisoner, let's say our opponent has Pass All Adapt, then the Phantasm could outrace us. So in a way it's safer to kill Phantasm, plus we have that way to kill Poisoner anyway. Ooh, spicy. Fine Broker into Fine Broker next turn, anyone? I'm excited. They did keep a card on top with Surveil, so could have a counterspell, I guess. Sever Strands, Rhizome Lurcher, alright. So Fine Broker into Fine Broker into Rhizome Lurcher. This is uh, filthy. I need to take a shower after this. Alright, let's take a big Arisum Lurcher. Could attack with a Lich, to be honest. Got some life to spare. Probably should have attacked first here. This is fine. Gotta start killing them at some point. Bartos and Bats. Yeah, it's definitely true. If they keep a card in hand, we might not want to cast anything in case that spells a devious cover-up. And great points. Eh, maybe the Gorgon can attack too. Traded for a Child of Night is not the best, but our ground creatures got their ground creatures covered anyway. So let's be aggressive. That works for me. Well, this is probably the most power and toughness I'm going to put in play in the shortest amount of time. 28 power and toughness in a second. Opponent is looking at their graveyard, so maybe a DV's cover-up happened. Oh yeah, gold garbage takes recycling seriously. <laughs> Thought erasure, nice. Kept the card on top, that's kind of bad news. Alright, we got there. Sweet. Alright, 6 and 1, let's see if we can win the last one here. 
and looks fine. Uh, I guess we'll play it on turn one since we don't have a two drop anyway. All right, hopefully we hit some land drops. All right, let's uh, disrupt our curve a little bit. All right, that's quite a hand. So Wound can kill Blade Instructor, so probably got to take a Flyer. And I guess we take the Legionnaire, since that's their likely early play here. It's going to leave them with Patrol and a Hellkite Whelp. I guess Whelp we might also want to take, because we have a Bats. But the Legionnaire is going to deal a lot of damage in the meantime. So we're probably going to let them play the Whelp before we play the Bats, so we can Sever Strands it. Hmm. It's pretty interesting. But for now, I think we take Legionnaire. And we're just gonna fire off this Necrotic Wounds right away here. Not gonna mess around. We could wait, I guess. Keep the Necrotic Wound to answer a Flyer. But we'll need to feed the Graveyard a lot more, and our hand's pretty awkward at the moment. Let's just kill it. So yeah, not a great hand. Could easily fall behind if they curve out here. It's mostly the flyers that we're worried about. And uh, opponent runs out bodyguard. Makes sense. All right, yeah, we could be in trouble. Recluse was a good draw though. This can block some of their flyers. So we need an untapped land for Gorgon. So what are we discarding? Do get to feed the lurchers at least, which is nice. So bats is bad if it lines up poorly with the Hellkite Whelp. Stray can help us hit land drops and is a chum blocker, so I kind of like keeping it. Plus we can sack it to the strands. So yeah, either we ditch a lurcher or we ditch the Bartizan bats if we think it's not going to line up well against the Hellkite Whelp. Probably ditch a lurcher, keep the flyer. Yeah, we're discarding cards on purpose here. Not a second too soon. Gotta play the Gorgon here. And we're pretty much in trouble if uh, they answer the Gorgon. Can play a Whelp here. Yeah, we're probably still dead here. Pretty much need to hit an untapped plant for Lurcher so they don't attack us on the ground anymore. And then we gotta start answering the flyers. This only deals damage to creatures and not players. So if we play the Lurcher, we're scheduled... I guess never mind, they have a boar. They can pump the Whelp. So we're just dead here. Bats dies to the Whelp. Recluse can block the Whelp. But then we're taking too much damage on the ground. Yeah, so we're dead. Uh, Stray can draw us into anything for one mana that's relevant, is there? I suppose we could draw into a vine. And then we have two blockers on the ground. I guess that's the only way to stay alive. But it's not going to put us in a better spot for next turn, so... Uh, I guess we'll try. Alright, no vine. Alright, it's too bad. Kept a, a two lander, didn't draw a third land. Happens sometimes. Dead weight would have been reasonable too, I guess. Kill the recruit. And drew f a few too many lurchers at the start here. It's okay, we still had a game to give. Still have a shot at getting seven. Alright, the sand's keepable, lacking some early creatures, but we've got a dead way to bridge the gap, and then hopefully we draw some uh, creatures to fuel the lurchers. Alright, had to be another Boros deck, of course. 
But that's fine. I think we've got a reasonable Boros matchup if we can stop drawing Rhizome Lurchers. Probably got a dead weight here. As much as I would like to keep the wounds as a, a nice answer, but without early creatures, it's going to be difficult. Might have to play one out here. Doesn't feel great, but uh, doing nothing also doesn't feel great. Skynight Legionnaire. Yeah, that's kind of the, the worst case scenario here. Bodyguard into Hasty Legionnaire. Um, so we could jump and then have a 3-3 Lurcher next turn, or we can just double block next turn. Alright. Now we can deadly visit the Legionnaire. And hopefully Bodyguard can't attack. Fine Broker's great. Can get back our dead weight. Could have kept Swamp as well, but we can't play both in the same turn anyway. Guess we'll attack. Alright, so Fine Broker was good here. Another Legionnaire? Ah, oh, come on. They get to mentor onto it right away as well. Yeah, it's not good. And now it's out of range of our Deadweight as well. I think we still play Fine Broker returning Deadweight here, keep both back. Got a good block on Bodyguard and Locksmith at least. And then we can hope to shrink down the Legionnaire. Returning Swamp doesn't do a whole lot. Ah. Well, that's a, a very sad way to end the draft. Pack Beasts. Yeah. Our draw lacked an early creature. But uh, yeah, those were some perfect draws from our opponents. Double Legionnaire after Bodyguard into Pack Beast. Oh well, 6 and 3. Chance for Glory. Surprised we didn't have it already. Guess we didn't have all the Mythics after all. Still 13-4 total with Gold Garbage. At Diamond and Mythic level, it's not bad. Don't get many easy games, so Golgari definitely pulled its weight. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.